Hey everyone, uh, and welcome back to the Bunter, uh, Bunter Blitz sessions. There will be, well, at least this one, and uh, uh, I'm not sure what, what's in store for uh, the one res day uh, they have in Vike in, uh, for, for the time that I am here, which is on the 18th. Uh, I probably will end up doing something. I'm not sure if it will be Bunter Blitz or something else. Uh, sound okay? Sound seems to be okay. So, well, I've had I've had a bit of a sabbatical. Didn't even play the uh, the rapid and blitz in Doha because I uh, fell quite seriously ill and just was in no shape to fly. And it took me a while to recover. And uh, I seem to be sort of back to some kind of uh, some kind of reasonable shape. So, from tomorrow there will be uh, there will be the white coverage to which you're all of course heartily invited and. Uh, for today, let's do maybe a couple of hours of uh, of banter. Uh, I will try and uh, keep an eye on chat, but uh, uh, since I haven't done this in a while, I think I will try to pay more attention to what I'm doing on on the board because uh, <laughs> don't don't want to do too badly. And uh, yeah, with that, uh, I mean there will be plenty of time to to to, to talk about uh, what's happening at what in Vike, and anyway, there's not a lot to say apart from that. So it's a, it's a varied and uh, varied actually, uh, and uh, a very interesting field. Some people are missing because uh, Gibraltar is particularly strong this year, but still should be a fantastic event to cover. And uh, I expect uh, a lot of fun, uh, a lot of fun, uh, fun to be had by by all, uh, you know, me and uh, me and Jan. Uh, not excluded, definitely. But uh, yeah, let's start playing chess today. Uh, weird. I think I yeah, okay. I know. I know why that is. Now I can do things. And yeah. There we go. Didn't even forget to switch to the board, which is uh, impressive by my standards. Uh, there was a, a somewhat weird, to my to my eyes, uh, request for a semi slav, which I will try to uh, fulfill immediately, so that we can get that out of the way. I'm not really a, an active slav player these days. Uh, and that, <laughs> what you're seeing right now, is one of the reasons. Obviously, you don't really want to be uh, facing the exchange slav necessarily but uh, I mean I've seen white lose these positions it's uh, they are not uh, immediately completely drawn and the way white loses these positions if he ever does lose these positions is by sort of playing all out for a draw without any consideration like uh, trying to simplify at every turn without any consideration for you know potential weakening of his position that he may be doing and uh, this will you know you can even generalize there I don't particularly like generalizing about many things but in that case you can even generalize and say that uh, when playing for a draw with white it is generally more advisable to play uh, normally uh, if at all possible. And then when the position uh, gets defined a lot better, uh, you can start looking for opportunities to make an immediate draw somewhere. Uh, whereas uh, if you do what my opponent seems to be doing here, uh, just uh, you know, go for a position where you can trade some pieces and then just uh, take every single trade available to you, you will probably end up uh, worsening your position to such an extent that uh, draw might become uh, difficult and uh, yeah I am currently much much better maybe close to winning and uh, even without the move b2 before white's position on the queen side was somewhat compromised and uh, I think it was a strange decision considering that my opponent seemed to be interested in, in, in simplifying and making his position as safe as possible that he took with the pawn on e5 I think keeping uh, complete symmetry was uh, more consistent with his game plan, as I understand it. But, uh, yeah, after b4, the queen side is so weak, and also knight b2 is such a huge threat right now, that I think the queen side just starts collapsing. Uh, 
I think I'll just uh, start taking these pawns. I don't really see any need for finesse anymore. You can just start collecting here. Uh, once again, there are probably more. Uh, I mean, I generally like to look for ways, uh, uh, like not to, not to play a capture every turn because it's 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 more interesting to convert by doing something uh, more exciting. But in some positions, there there really is no need to. Uh, there really is no need to do anything special when once the once the queen starts starts collapsing. But yeah, normally they take with the bishop and then play, black plays knight d7 and plays something like rook c8, queen a5. Probably starts with queen a5 to stop knight a4, knight c5. And the uh, the thing about the exchange, uh, the exchange slav, if these two bishops remain on the board, the structure sort of favors black a little bit. Not not by a lot, of course. And white should of course still make a very comfortable draw in a position like this. But this bishop is slightly better than the bishop on g3 because the, the, the black has his pawns on the light squares. And you can sometimes uh, run into difficulties even, uh, even if you do that. But by, by taking with the pawn and then allowing, uh, allowing me to assume control over the light squares on, on the queen side, my opponent has given me uh, way too much play. Yeah, not not gonna play the Berlin, uh, Coco. That's one thing that you will not see during these sessions. I haven't actually faced three c five in a very very long time, and. There's a number of interesting things you can do here. One of them being this move. And this is a bit of a weird, well, slight sideline. I wouldn't call it exactly a sideline because uh, very serious players have done this. But the evaluation of this idea is uh, not immediately obvious. Uh, the point is why just, uh, you know, abandons all pretense of hanging on to the e5 pawn and aims for very fast development, hoping to eventually play c2, c4, and undoubling his c pawns. And uh, the bishop on b2 obviously is a very nice piece. You have to pay attention to, as usual, to the uh, a5 pawn breaks. But uh, with the bishop on b2 and the good squares for the knight on c6 uh, being unavailable, I think I can even play b5 in many positions there. And I don't want to allow e7, e5 immediately, so I'll start with bishop b2. I think we castle here, and the plan should be, I guess, knight bd2 and c4, or maybe knight e5 in some positions, but I like connecting the knights first. And there will be a tactical justification for uh, us playing b4 later, because if he plays d4 in reply, we can take on d4, knight takes d4, bishop takes g4, I will, uh, it will be more uh, obviously understandable on the next move. A5 now is a serious option he needs to consider, I think, but I, if all else fails, I can play knight e5. I think this probably isn't correct, although with a pin, uh, with a pin on, the, on the king's side, this might actually be playable, but I'd be very surprised. I mean, it allows bishop b5. It also allows b5 and c6, as I now realize, which might be even simpler. Just get this uh, monstrous protected passed pawn on the sixth. Uh, should always be uh, something you uh, don't mind, to put it mildly. And there is uh, uh, no way to undermine it, really. So this is a huge, huge problem for uh, for my opponent here. I think I'm, I want to trade uh, a pair of knights. Uh, I'm just choosing between knight d4 and I mean a pair, a pair of bishops. I'm choosing between knight d4 and knight e5. I'm not sure which one is which one is better. I think knight e5 is more natural here. He can play bishop f5, but once again, if I really want to trade the, the bishops, I can play bishop d3. The reason I I considered knight d4 was just to make sure that he takes on e2. Yeah. Perhaps it was, uh, for, for that reason, perhaps it was slightly more precise to go, uh, to go 94. 
But once again, this uh, I'm not even sure if this is if, if this can be called a misplay, and it shouldn't really change the evaluation of the position anyway. I'll just continue developing because uh, I have this uh, monster on c6, and also the knight on a5 is not the uh, you know the most active of pieces here. So um, I have a number of plans I can consider. I'll go with this for uh, for now and uh, put the other one on f3 because uh, you know as long as I control uh, some kind of counterplay in the center connected with I don't know bishop d6 rook e85 and it should be uh, easy enough to control just to plan just by planting the second knight on e5 my position is just overwhelming because uh, even if you imagine let's say this knight on a5 being on some good square like c5 then the position would be less clear but white would still be of course a lot a lot better due to uh, the the pass pawn on c6, but with the knight on a5 also uh, not really uh, participating in the game. Uh, White's advantage, uh, provided I don't blunder anything, should be overwhelming. <laughs> if he plays bishop d6 here, I now realize that if I go knight e5, he has knight e4 which is maybe something I should uh, pay attention to. But I can also start by playing rook a4 and doubling on the a-file, for instance, um, and then uh, sort of switch between uh, the center and the, uh, the center and the, the queen side for future, for future plans. Yeah, we will be doing uh, we will be doing uh, Vikings A A, and we will also I think be uh, keeping an eye on on the B group as well. It's a uh, it's a very interesting mixture of uh, young players there, and uh, I think it's uh, uh, very much worth everyone's time to to pay attention to that as well. I'm playing bishop b5 because I kind of want to give him this option of trading queens there, and then the knight might get to d7, which would immediately decide the game. Uh, if he wants to take on a5, he needs to play knight of 6 immediately later, but yeah, but then I, I should find a way to open the queen side up somehow. I started eating less mainly. Uh, where's your mic? Uh, it was. Uh, I did not really start uh, doing anything, anything serious, uh, uh, sort of uh, gym related. Although I am doing some of that now. But uh, my initial approach was just uh, eat less, eat healthier. That actually works. Uh, for a majority of people. I'm not even sure this is such a good move. I was considering just playing rook takes a5, but now that he's allowed me to play knight d7, it feels very stupid not to. But if he takes on d7 here and plays knight d6, uh, it might actually be a bit tricky. I'm, I'm a bit unhappy about this. This is a very, very premature position in which to resign. Because let's say I take on a5 twice here, he goes rook d8. Uh, I might be winning by force after something like rook a7, king f8 b6, king e7, b7, this might be enough, or this might completely bust my position. Of, no, I think this, this actually is winning. Uh, then maybe this idea connected with uh, uh, the plan of playing bishop a6 and rook a8 might still be winning, but I would need to calculate some variations, so uh, resigning here really doesn't make any sense to me at all. Uh, yeah, the decision has been taken uh, to uh, as an experiment to have the the white coverage uh, only available for for premium users only, and uh, we will see. Uh, by we, I mean the company. Uh, I wasn't uh, involved in making the decision. We'll we'll see how that works out. Okay. Should Cook do another Ashes tour? I think if he continues playing as a batsman, uh, he'll play for a while yet. That would be my, uh, I mean, initial initial feeling that uh, he probably should not be captaining anymore because he doesn't seem to be enjoying it. Not for any other reason, to be honest, but simply because he doesn't seem to be enjoying it very much. But as for as for playing as a batsman, I think he still has a lot to contribute. 
I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do against bishop e2, to be honest. I think maybe I will try playing b5, bishop b7 as early as possible. Yeah, the royal we. The royal we was very much in evidence there. This is the problem with uh, with the early b5 though, because now I, I cannot really play knight f6 because of e5, which is very, very awkward. And he will play rook e1, knight d5 against almost any two moves that I can make. Uh, so, um, yeah, this is why I'm, I'm less than uh, entirely happy about my choice. And if I play knight c6, knight takes e6, d takes e6 to take the sting out of potential knight d5 ideas, I think he just goes e4, e5, and uh, those positions can be extremely dangerous for black. I will try to somehow deal with all this, but... Uh, I mean, all the moves I can, uh, I'm, I'm sort of considering here are extremely risky simply because of rookie one ninety five against absolutely anything. I've managed, I think, to play myself into a very annoying situation here. I would like to play bishop d six, but I'm not entirely honest. Yeah, I think if I play bishop d six, this is my game against uh, uh, the late great Vugarga Shima from one of the Baku Grand Prix. A four is is very very strong there. I will show this actually after the game if I remember, because this is a very, very beautiful tactic which I missed the, uh, in that game against Vugar. And I was completely wiped off the board in that game. I believe that was my first ever game against Vugar, and for some reason I thought when preparing for the game that he was this, you know, strict positional player who valued like the precise placement of pieces and so on. And he just completely destroyed me tactically. Now with the knight on b3, I think I can actually do this and I'm quite happy to do this because uh, this creates some, some issues for my opponent. Bishop on e5 looks awkward, but on the other hand, he does need to now somehow solve the issue of the pawn on e4 being, uh, being under attack. And I should be able to, I mean, if he goes bishop g2, f4 b will become a threat. But by that point, I should be able to find some counterplay to, to justify this bishop on e5. <clears throat> like I can start by castling. I'm actually not entirely happy about all this, to be honest. I wanted to play b4 here, but it, it it's a bit messier than I originally thought. But I probably can still do this. Knight a4, I want to play bishop c6. But yeah, I mean, it, it does become extremely concrete, and uh, I might run into some very, very serious turbulence there. For instance, as I now realize, knight a4, bishop c6, f4 is very, very unpleasant. Yeah, that sequence of moves was not my my finest hour. Maybe queen c6, no, but queen c6 is even worse. I have to do this. But now if he plays f4, yeah, knight c5 I am very, very happy to see, because now I can simply take on b2, and I solve my, uh, I solve my issues. It's not about the b2 pawn, it's about the fact that my bishop actually... Uh, escaped from from the very very bad square on e5 where it had no moves, but uh, he could have played uh, bishop c6 f4 there, and I think I was in a lot of trouble tactically. I might n still not be doing all that great if great if he plays e5 here, but at least we have a pawn, and if we somehow finish development, uh, if the knight on b8, uh, well, if he if it if it gets out uh, f f from the b8 square. We should be doing uh, okay. And yeah, uh, I've seen something in chat, so I can. Uh, 
now and ever. I, I understand that uh, you, um, it is sort of, these types of shows are uh, apparently exactly why you joined and I appreciate that. But uh, A, uh, because uh, my, my challenge list is reasonably long, uh, I cannot and, and, and never do promise to play to play everyone who challenged me and B, uh, sort of specifically spamming, uh, spamming in chat to, to pick you does not help. Uh, it has been proven not to help, so uh, don't do that. I maybe have had some uh, more interesting tactical opportunities because this move f3 actually gives me this intermediate check on a7 and right now my opponent needs to move the queen away from c3 otherwise queen a7 followed by bishop takes c4 <clears throat> will be very very strong but I just wanted to play yeah this is uh, this is not good but I wanted to play a5 just to uh, take that square away from the knight on b3 I mm, wasn't really looking at any kind of tactical opportunities uh, because I frankly I didn't expect him to play f3 it's not a move you normally want to make and yeah and the tactic I wanted to show you I believe I, I had this precise position on the board there and then this and here against Vogar I thought for a while and I thought this seems to work out because if he takes takes I take on h2 he goes king h1 I can play queen well more or less anywhere let's say c5 and the knight is hanging and the bishop will come back to e5 next move. And I played bishop d6 expecting g3, bishop e5 and some kind of a weird position arises. And Vogar thought for about five minutes and play a2, a4. And I realized that with a pawn on a4, if I play b4 now, he just goes knight b5, well frankly any knight, I don't know, this one or the other one, doesn't really matter. And in this position with the knight being protected, I just get completely crushed because I cannot abandon the bishop on h2 and if I go queen e5 he just goes g3 and in this position the fact that I cannot stop stop knight d6 check will be completely completely decisive. I just lose material or get mated or something. So I ended up I believe playing bishop takes h2, uh, king h1, bishop e5, he took on b5 and then my, my queen side is just completely ruined. I mean the knight on b8 it's, it's almost impossible to Imagine how I will include it in the game and I mean I fought valiantly but uh, I was never really allowed back into the game and uh, lost quite badly. Okay, moving on. Let's make some other first moves as well. I'm not sure what you mean, Portis, too, about the Olympiad experience. Okay, my opponent really is forcing me to play the Sicilian, so I will oblige. I mean, our Olympiad experiences were very, very different because we were playing for different teams. Not quite sure how to, what exactly you mean there. Yeah, people are playing queen of three here, and uh, it's been extremely annoying to me as a black player, so maybe I should try once to do it as white as well. Hmm. I think we castle here. I think we wait for one move until we for to play queen g3. Yeah, now I think it's time. This is uh, this is uh, did I blunder knight g4? I did blunder knight g4, didn't I? Kind of disgusted with myself right now. You kind of need to think about things you do before you do them. 
That seems like good business practice. Yeah, that, that is a huge amnesty for me because after 94, 96, 93, I don't think I can even equalize. And now I should be back to being safely slightly better. Hmm. Yeah, but uh, I do get annoyed with myself sort of uh, very, very seriously when I do things like that. And once again, I'm probably allowing too much by allowing knight takes e4 here, but I really want to land this knight on b6. Didn't really want f3, b5. Although, once again, probably uh, was a safer safer idea not to, not to do this. Because I think uh, my opponent can now take on e4, and if I take on g7, he can take on f2. My play in this game so far has been... Yeah, and this I just completely missed. Really not playing well this game. Trying to do too much, frankly. It's a very nice end game now that uh, my opponent hasn't played knight g4, and I was trying to squeeze uh, way too much out of it. Yeah, you're supposed to take on c6 first, of course. But once again, I uh, for for some reason my opponent decides not to not to punish me. It feels like I'm getting way too much trust from from him for no real reason. At least uh, none that I can see in this game. If he plays d5 here, he's still fine, uh, which you know casts a very very serious doubt over my my entire concept with knight a4. If, because even if black kind of declines a healthy extra pawn in the center and still equalizes comfortably. Probably the whole idea was completely unnecessary. Yep. Black generally is just completely fine in end games like this. Uh, they are still playable end games, but uh, there can be no argument that white is somehow better. I would like to play both bishop d3 and g4. And I think if I start with g4, black maybe might want to consider playing e5, e4. So I'll start with bishop d3. But now h5 might not be a bad idea at all. And suddenly there is very, very loud lounge music being played, seemingly very close outside, which I, is not an occurrence uh, I have encountered before in the Chess 24 offices. Maybe there's a party going on to which I'm not invited, which would be very, very normal. I might be able to pose some questions now because I think my opponent misplaced his pieces a little bit. I could also just double on the h file, actually, once again. I think maybe I'm uh, overreacting to minor tactical ideas. The idea here, if he goes rook d7, I have bishop p4, but as I now realize, uh, this will only win me the d file, but I will not be able to take on b7 anyway, which once again kind of makes me question uh, whether this was the best move considered compared to just doubling on the on the h file and attacking the h7 pawn uh, chess 24 is uh, very central uh, in Hamburg it's it's very nice I mean the the neighborhood here is very very nice No, I don't think uh, I don't think there are very many online savants, so to speak, who would crush uh, who would crush uh, uh, live chess, so to speak, if uh, if they were given the chance. I think chess is uh, is not that kind of a game. You are either good at it or you're not, and uh, it shouldn't really matter very much where you're playing. Once again, this is, uh, you know, very, very far from clear.
My position is, is obviously excellent because of the time advantage that I have, but objectively I probably don't have very much. Yeah, this needs to be controlled somehow. And I don't really see how. I should probably have not allowed this at all. Although I may be winning some material on the queen side, but yeah, this, this king of four king g3 plan is is very, very annoying. I will waste the tempo to protect the g2 pawn. I think it's very, very important not to give up on g2 because if we do, we will... Uh, find it very difficult to convert. But I think I'm probably safe enough just picking this up because I have rook c2 after rook g7. And the bishop on b7 is very important because it keeps my king side together. Uh, having said that, I've, I have just allowed king g3 back, which is not a good idea. I think this is a draw now because he can just take and play king g3 and if I, and I cannot keep the f3 pawn alive. But yeah, this, this game was uh, full of uh, mistakes, large and small, mainly from my side, to be honest. I think my opponent mainly just played too slowly in the opening and this is why uh, I, I was even able to get anywhere at all in, in this endgame. Somewhere here I should not be... Um, well, maybe I'm slightly better, but not, not by a lot. Well, I am reading some of the chat, but... Uh, uh, there is a lot of uh, somewhat random... Uh, somewhat random uh, uh, things. No, I did not overlook e4 in the end, because uh, the f5 pawn is, is pinned. Uh, this I actually did see. If he plays e4, he cannot recapture. Uh, he cannot recapture back, so this actu this move actually does lose. Uh, but uh, simply taking and going king g3 and uh, playing e4 only later once I play bishop b... Ah, hang on. e4 here is once again uh, not, not possible legally because of the pin, but king f2 I think might give black decent drawing chances. Uh, uh, no, the chat doesn't bore me. I'm actually very. I mean, what, uh, the moment I started doing this, uh, doing these uh, uh, things with like uh, larger chat participation, uh, they became a lot more interesting because there's more. There are more things to discuss and more things to uh, to get excited about, but. Uh, there's not a lot I can contribute to the uh, discussion of the geographical location of the IHS 24 office. Played e4 and knight f3. <clears throat> Let's play c4. Yeah, and uh, gb is correct. King g2 followed by e4 is probably the, the cleanest option there. But yeah, just not a not a stellar game from from any point of view uh, from me. Uh, starting from a number of really really horrible mistakes in the opening, which went unpunished because I think my opponent just uh, could not believe that I could be making moves this bad. This is what Hikaru has been doing quite a bit. I mean, I'm not sure what my yeah. This is. This is the Hikaru reply to uh, reply to the English. Uh, it's actually very, very interesting and very, very playable. I'm not sure if Black is doing great, but Black definitely can do this if he wants. <laughs> Knight of six, though, is somewhat incongruous with what Black has been doing up to now, because I think the plan, at least the way Hikaru... This is a blunder, though. 
The way Hikaru has been playing the system is he was including h4, g4 and undermining it with f5, or maybe even starting with f5 to make the threat of h5, h4 a lot stronger. But my opponent just uh, uh, made a very, very large mistake here in the game. Uh, well, I, I hesitate to say he's effectively over, but he is going to, I think, lose a full piece here. How are my chances of making the candidates? Uh, in order to make the next candidates, I would need to either finish top two in the forthcoming Grand Prix series, in which I will definitely play. I'm not going to be uh, one of the people who uh, refuse to play in it, but uh, it's going to be a very, very tough field. And uh, um, I haven't done particularly well in the Grand Prix uh, series sort of ever. Uh, this year, uh, the Grand Prix are not round robins. They they will be, I believe, twenty four player uh, twenty four player Swiss tournaments, which is is going to be uh, very exciting to watch. I think, and it's I think a good idea from uh, from Fides side to uh, broaden the field to make uh, you know um, to make the tournament accessible to more people because there's a lot of very exciting people out there who would dearly love a chance to to compete for for qualification but they will be very very tough tournaments the fields the fields are going to be very very difficult or i would need to once again do well in the world cup which is <clears throat> as uh life shows it's not impossible but it's not going to be easy um once again not entirely sure what i'm doing here but i'll develop it to f2 i think um it makes sense in in these types of positions because you don't. Uh, it makes your reactions to the Volga in particular somewhat uh, more comfortable because uh, you don't. Um, the knight doesn't get in the way is what I want to say. Although I mean Volga still remains perfectly playable, of course, or the Benko as. Uh, uh, People are probably more uh, used to calling it. Yeah, black definitely gets uh, your your typical Benko type compensation here, and uh, I will need to be very careful because these positions, if you <clears throat> if you miss something, they could just completely collapse for white. The fact that the knight is on f2 helps me against uh, c4, knight, d3 counterplay, so at least I shouldn't be worried about that. But there is all kinds of other things uh, that can happen, like if the knight from f6 gets to b6, uh, knight a4 becomes very much part of black's agenda attacking. I mean, if, if the knight on c3 gets traded off, my queen side becomes very, very exposed. Um, Plenty of counterplay black can try uh, going for here. On the other hand, if he plays really, really slowly, I might be able to, to do something. And here, already, uh, there is the option of playing f4, knight d7, bishop takes e7, but that bishop might get caught after f6. So I'm not sure if, uh, if it's such a great idea for white here. And uh, my opponent obviously wants knight c7, knight b5, which is very similar to the knight d7, knight b6, knight a4 idea that I described earlier. Hmm. Kind of feel like doing it and testing, sort of testing my, my opponent's uh, tactics here. I missed that altogether. That probably is a is a good reply as well. <laughs> and now I think it all becomes a lot more uh, a lot sharper and a lot more concrete because uh, this dark square is is, is an absolute mo dark square bishop is an absolute monster. And if I if I don't achieve something immediate on the king side. I will probably get rolled over and uh, my queen side will completely collapse. This this move I don't particularly like. I think this is a bit too ambitious. I understand where, where my, my opponent is coming from, so to speak, but uh, I think this is too ambitious because he's giving me way too many pawns on the queen or on the king side. He should have just taken on e6. He would have had a similar position, but uh, without this pawn on f5. 
and, and this is just a blunder. If you if you compare what my opponent got and and this, I think it should be quite obvious that you always take on e6 and then you make a move like knight c7, for instance, trying to uh, take this uh, take this sting out, and and then uh, from a positional viewpoint, uh, Black has a very very uh, decent game. He just needs to make sure he doesn't get mated, which is, uh, I mean, still an open question. He might get mated here, but uh, f5 just doesn't look right. Uh, hello, Drac. My mods are here. Okay, so... We should include some games against uh, people uh, rated somewhat lower, because I think Hang on a sec. Scrolling is, as usual, not my not my strongest side. So I will I will give this one more shot and and then just abandon abandon all hope and pick someone at random. <sighs> yeah, and how can you not play against Ramsey Bolton? Ah, and it's my move. <laughs> I, I should not repeat this fantastic experience of just waiting for my opponent to do something in a position where it's my move for about a minute and a half and then, say, then, then saying this game is not going to start and aborting it. I've done this once and I probably should remember never to do it again. Although this game <laughs> really does seem like it's not going to start, but after all the speechifying, but uh, at least this way it's not my fault. People really are very interested in, in whether I finished f f visited the... Uh, I assume that's a newly built Philharmony in, uh, in Hamburg. I haven't even seen it from a distance. I just arrived yesterday and uh, haven't really done much sightseeing. It's been snowing and I'm also somewhat tired. Okay, this, this experiment failed. Uh, sorry, Ramsey. Uh, this, will, this will have to be scrapped. Whoops! Okay. Just as I was about to, just as I was about to finish that game. I was, I think, within a millisecond of clicking, clicking the abort button there. Oh, a dragon aficionado. That worries me. And I generally played 9g4, I think, in these sessions, so I don't know why I castled. Somehow I always end up with the absolutely the same position against the... Whenever people play the, the dragon against me, I end up uh, getting absolutely the... Absolutely the same position time and time again. I don't know how this happens. It, it really should not be possible for every single dragon player to play uh, the exact same line against against me, but uh, this is somehow what they do. Don't really understand it. And the line is g4, queen, a5, knight, g5, and then we play, and I'm kind of not enjoying it, to be honest. I'm, I would like to do something else. I'm kind of wondering if I can just play h5 here, but... I don't really see mate. I don't know, I'll start with a3. It's probably a horrible move. I just want uh, want my opponent to start thinking, kind of not enjoying this experience of him not, not having to question any decisions at all.
But this is slow, so slow that I have a suspicion even h5 might be a very good move here. Rook b8 though, I sort of assumed this is what I was playing against. That was kind of the entire point of me playing a3. I wanted to uh, have uh, this move in some positions, in particular in this position where it seems to just win a pawn for not a lot. That was more or less my uh, my entire plan when when I picked a3 as a move. Rook should probably go to c7 with a view of uh, uh, sacrificing it after bishop b6 because it really is a lot of time. Or rook f8. I mean, that should not. I mean, if I'm, if I keep my wits about me, this should not work. There should not be. Uh, uh, enough play here for black. He does get to open some files on the queen side, but he he also has to give up so much material to do that that um, I should not really be in any kind of trouble here whatsoever converting my very large material advantage. Provided I don't blunder once again, this is goes goes without saying that I should not blunder here. Because in Dragon you can still you can still run into trouble even if uh, you're completely winning if you miss some tactics when there there's always some tactics. But yeah, objectively this has to be very very bad for Black. I'm not sure about this move, but I just want to. You know, once I'm given this opportunity to trade the the light squared bishops. It feels like a good idea. Actually this way, I mean if he takes with a knight now, <clears throat> I will have to allow, uh, okay, no longer relevant. Now I'm just a ton of material up and uh, the game should end quickly. Yeah, it did not end up being a particularly interesting game, but uh, yeah, normally, normally what happens in my blitz sessions is that I play g4 here, people play queen a5, I go knight d5, they take, 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 go, why, wow, okay, I need to recapture this, yeah. Take, take, they go knight d7. I think I played this position at the very least maybe three or four times over the course of the Bamba sessions uh, here. And uh, against different players as well, which is uh, the most surprising bit. <clears throat> and this position I think is uh, not that clear. And I was just trying to get something else because I've, uh, I was becoming a bit, um, a bit bored uh, by playing this endgame over and over again. Accelerated Dragon is a playable opening. Uh, I don't know if I can say uh, much else apart from that. It seems to be, to be staging a bit of a comeback right now from, from what I could see. There, there's been a number of games uh, in the Accelerated Dragon uh, recently. And uh, serious players have started playing it again, I think. Whoa. Exciting. Not gonna accept though. Might be forced to accept. I think I'll I'll just uh, go for the plan of uh, castling queenside here. And that should be safe enough, I hope. I don't know if I should include e6 as well. Uh, it has both, uh, both advantages and drawbacks, but I think maybe I should just to stop d5. Because d5, in particular, in connection with potential knight d4, knight e6, would have been uh, uh, troublesome later. And now I just want to castle queenside, and 
Uh, yes, White opened uh, opened the G file, but he didn't really get too much mileage out of this. If I if I castle uh, to the other side of the board. Yeah, both uh, both Karana and MVL are in uh, in Jib. Well, will be in Jib. Not not. Uh, uh, I mean, they aren't currently in Jib. I would think it's a bit too early, but they are. They are playing Jib uh, over Vike, which is an interesting sort of shift in in focus. Because, I mean, it it kind of it really is a very very uh, a large statement of uh, the uh, sort of on the subject of how uh, well respected the Gibraltar tournament is right now. If people are preferring it uh, uh, to Vike, and you have to assume both of them were invited to Vike, although I don't, I don't know that for a fact, but that would be my immediate assumption because they are so strong, and it's very difficult to imagine any tournament not uh, not inviting them. I mean, any tournament of Vike stature, which uh, you know very much is. Uh, one of the strongest tournaments in the calendar. This is a horrible, horrible move. I don't know what it, what that is about. You can play Queen H5, forcing me to play B6 probably because all of my stuff is hanging on the on the king side. Also Queen B5, but this I am less worried about somehow. <clears throat> it's still very possible to get mated here, but I'm hoping uh, I'm hoping to be able to to dodge it. But yeah, it's uh, it's getting a bit hot on the king side. I was planning to play knight c6, but then after knight rook b5, both queen a6 and more importantly rook takes b7, queen b5 check become become very unpleasant threats. And if I play queen e4, I think every single endgame will be unpleasant. But I think I have to. After rook b5, I think I'm more or less forced to play queen e4. No, I'm sure there are practical considerations as well, uh, trotters. But uh, no matter, you know, that comes into the equation for sure. But I think uh, the fact that uh, the field is incredibly strong in Jib uh, is is more important than you know any any monetary considerations people may have. Once again, I have nothing to, to base this opinion on. This is just how I think this works. And here he has something very unpleasant like rook h5, but on the other hand, this knight on h4 is a bit stupid. And I was hoping to uh, play against the f2 pawn. Bishop g3, actually, I think maybe is the first move in this game by my opponent, which I don't quite agree with because it's way too slow. And now the rook on b5 is a bit stuck. More than a bit stuck, actually. Now I'm suddenly a lot better because this rook will uh, really struggle returning to the game. And yeah, here I'm just completely winning. This is not a very difficult conversion either because, uh, uh, I mean, the white pieces are just so discoordinated. Mm. Shouldn't really be an issue here. Don't really, don't really. I mean, it's it's very difficult to like pay too much attention to this because uh, the position is just so utterly winning. I think I'll just make a pass pawn on the a file and uh, and queen it. I think this probably is the the easiest way to go about things here. Just push it down the board. There's very, very little white can do here. He has one check. I mean, yeah, uh, not a difficult conversion here.
but I think I was in, in, in very, very serious trouble uh, for large parts of that game. Okay, let's... Uh, I seem to be doing too well today, so let's uh, let's play somebody who will completely destroy me, in particular since it's a three-minute game. And I'll stick to my own repertoire for this game. I think it's uh, it's wiser to not not uh, try the uh, the the Dutch or something like that. Don't really remember very much about uh, about this because the bishop really isn't supposed to go to uh, f4 in these positions. It normally goes to h4, and there, there is a, actually a market difference because it uh, surprisingly even the fact that it kind of touches the pawn on e7 in many positions is uh, is very very relevant. I'm wondering if I should just give up on the c6 pawn here, just give him give him the c6 pawn for uh, just for for tempo. I could also just play bishop d5. It gives up two tempi, but uh, it makes uh, a certain sense as well. But no, I don't I don't like giving up two full tempi here. I think this is better. He can take on b8 and on c6. That's obviously a, a possibility. But I will have. Uh, Decent prospects on the queen side. Yeah, I'm not quite sure who that is. I, I, I hovered over the name and there's even a name on the file, but it's not a name I recognize. I have a feeling it may, might be a, a pseudonym of some sort. But with this rating, he must be very good. Need to pay attention here because uh, uh, I would like this knight back in back in the uh, in the game, but I need to make sure I don't blunder anything. And once again, I'm kind of. I just really want to do this. I think forcing him to play e3, e4 here makes a ton of sense. Although, yeah, I'm I'm liking this less now. I. It's not horrible, but I'm not sure this is great. But he, I don't think he should have played e5, to be honest. I think uh, giving me the d5 square is uh, not ideal. I think uh, um, a b5, c b5, d5 was uh, you know a very, very serious opportunity. And also just ignoring what I was doing was quite decent. Need not to blunder takes, takes, and uh, rook takes b5. So the queen needs to support the rook on a7 somehow, or I can play rook a8. The knight goes to b6, and then we've uh, managed to uh, stabilize at least uh, at least uh, temporarily. And uh, questions about this game hopefully will be answered after the game, but not during the game. During the game, this is a three-minute game against a very strong opponent. I'm struggling to uh, to say much uh, as it is, and uh, I can't really be uh, reading chat here. A bit too much. I have a good position now, but I still need to convert it. Uh, need to start opening files in the center uh, in order to. Uh, do something here. I don't know why I'm I really thought I should play Queen C8 and then I play Queen E6. I don't really understand this decision at all Might lead to uh, trouble now Although not after this move I expect uh, I don't know what this is to be honest he can play Knight E6 and I will have to go back it's becoming a bit random.
and I really should start playing faster, but it's difficult. Yeah, and this is a very poor capture. I should not have done that. That definitely was a mistake. Rook a7 right now is a... Yeah, and this also is a problem, actually. I think I will end up getting mated somehow. And also 20 seconds against 30 when you're, also, when you're still talking is, is not a good spot. Rook a7 is probably quite strong. Or that, yeah, that also is very, very good. Yeah, I had to I had to stop talking at some point. And actually, this is sort of half playable, but of course, uh, completely lost because of uh, because of the time difference. Yeah. Fair enough. Uh, I think the the opening was very very unclear, but somewhere here I have to be uh, I have to be much much better with the with the knight getting out. But uh, the the sequence of decisions I've taken starting from here, and in particular the speed at which I was playing, was just not uh, not good enough. And. Uh, yeah, from I, I really like the idea of, uh, well, I mean, it's not a difficult decision to make, but uh, taking on b5 and then not trading the rooks to keep me constantly worried about the a file was uh, very difficult to deal with uh, or, or with the time available. And actually, I considered in this position playing rook queen b8. Yeah, and that was not a good idea because of knight d7 immediately, but I somehow, I refused, uh, refused it because of this, but actually just giving up this exchange and playing something like rook e8 and taking with the epo is probably fine for black, but yeah, the position I got is just very, very difficult to play on very limited time. And here I was already actively looking for ways to give up this exchange. And if I could, for instance, play queen e6 here, it would be excellent if, uh, if that only lost the exchange, but there's knight g5 check, which wins the queen. Yeah, and rook f4, uh, rook f4, knight d6 is just game over. I was hoping for I was hoping for rook a7, rook takes e4, queen takes e4, queen e6, which I think would have led to a very unclear position, but my opponent uh, did not allow that. And yeah, I'm uh, completely lost here. The game shouldn't even have continued as far as it did continue. Like in this position, I guess something like rook e1, I mean rook a1 followed by rook e1 uh, is, just, uh, is just winning. But yeah, an interesting game which... Uh, if this were a four-minute game, I think uh, I could have done a bit better with this position, but uh, difficult to play against a player playing quite well and and also trying to talk about it. Uh, and uh, the, the conclusion of the, of the game here, I think, uh, played very, very well. Uh, let's do something weird. Let's do something weird. This is, of course, inadvisable because, uh, I mean, this is the Sokolsky with the tempo down. So, <clears throat> bishop takes b5 is very, very strong here. Let's see if my opponent uh, realizes what he should be aiming for here. I think, you know, in terms of just outright refuting this, bishop takes b5 is probably the uh, the strictest option white has. Because if you if you keep this alive, black still has hopes of, uh, you know, landing some kind of a uh, quasi-Sicilian uh, or quasi-French position where uh, he might have uh, half-decent chances. Yeah, no, I knew the risks, and I, I think I prefaced uh, prefaced accepting then ch that, that challenge by saying, uh, let's get completely crushed, but you do have to try occasionally. Uh, 
important not to get mated here somehow. So I will try to control. I mean, the way you get mated in these positions is that you allow knight g5 and then it snowballs. Knight g5, queen h5 or queen g4, then there's some, some sacrifice happening on f7 or e6 and you just get completely destroyed. Or you allow knight to h5. So I think we will have to be very, very careful about these squares. And the king is definitely not going to the king side. The king is either sticking to e8 or I could maybe find some kind of a favorable version and uh, later in the game castle queen side. I'm also wondering if I should just play c4 because uh, end games will be quite decent if I play c4. And uh, because my my eventual plans will most likely feature castling queenside, I think just making sure this is this is an ambitious decision <laughs> because I can play b3 and those two pieces are not coming back. <laughs> but on the other hand, it will be very difficult for me to to do anything on the queen side. This is a, a, a very interesting and ambitious decision, although my opponent maybe doesn't doesn't realize that. <laughs> I really don't know what to do about this. Because I, I really will not be able to open the king side at any point. My position will collapse even with the two pieces locked down, but uh, I should be quite safe with two of his serious pieces completely switched switched off. But how do I make uh, how do I make uh, much progress later? Let's see. I think maybe what I should be doing here is like going after the a4 pawn straight away. He probably wants to play bishop g5 here, which makes sense from a positional standpoint. But, I mean, he will be severely hampered by the fact that uh, he doesn't have, uh, you know, the normal amount of pieces in attack here. If you imagine the same position but with his bishop not on b1 but on, let's say, f1, you would say white is completely winning strategically. But with a bishop on b1, it's a bit less clear. Uh, from my standpoint, though, even collecting this pawn on a4 will not at all be easy because it really takes about 5 tempi to get there. I, I have to play knight b6, then I have to take, and then to bring it back, I need to also include knight b7 because the knight on a5 will be hanging. So it really does, does take a tremendous amount of time for me uh, to get all this done, uh, which is um, quite clearly a problem. And this, I think, I mean, it's a, if I play h6, I have a feeling I might be getting mated and I really don't want to play h5 either. Yeah, that's the thing. All of my plans on the queen side here are very, very slow. I'll do something weird here because normally you really don't want to give, don't want to be giving up this, this amount of uh, dark squares, but here, I am basically, although, yeah, I'm, I'm risking a great, great deal here. But I think I'm, I'm sort of committed to this now. I'm just not in time. I'm just not in time, I think. So the king has to run. And now I think my opponent kind of needs to, I mean, he is a bit all in here. Because, uh, whoops, almost blundered, almost blundered that knight on a5, which would be a mistake. But I'm going to uh, stop myself at the very last minute. Okay, so phase one is, phase one is complete. We've won, uh, we've won the a-pawn. And now every single endgame is winning for us. But... We still need to make sure nothing collapses on the other side of the board. But I think I'm sort of just in time with my uh, with my restructuring. I can do this, and f7 is now safely protected, and now I can start shoving uh, shoving the uh, the a pawn down the board. 
And if he goes knight g4 here, I can even play h5 for fun, for fun and giggles. And frankly, I would start considering just sacrificing some pieces if I were my opponent. Because you're not winning the slow game here. But you're also probably not winning the fast game either, because the king is now where it's supposed to be. And I should be able to weather uh, most uh, direct assaults on, uh, on the king side when the king is not there. It will still take some time, because I play a4, he plays rook a3, and it will still take me some time to shift. Uh, but uh, we still are effectively uh, a rook and a piece up, to a, to, you know, to, to a certain degree you can describe it like this. And yeah, that's a large advantage. And he's even giving me the, the option to play a3 which I think I should just take. I mean, he might reconsider. He might reconsider and uh, if the option disappears, I will be very sad. And uh, yeah, I'm not quite sure what's going on here. I'll just take. I mean, nothing really is hanging on the other side. And now that we've actually successfully pushed a three, um, our win on the queen side is completely secured. We don't need to do anything anymore. I will just, uh, I will just. Con Actually, I don't want to give up the b2 pawn. I was, I was about to say that I will, I will stabilize for a while and then switch to the player on the queen side. But actually, no. No point. Uh, so. <clears throat> Uh, that was a weird proof of concept, and I think objectively somewhere here uh, my position has to be extremely dangerous. And and also I think knight f6 check is just a mistake, because as we have seen in the game, he very, very quickly had to switch to that other plan of attacking the f7 pawn. So I think there is a lot of argument to be made for playing something like queen f4 immediately, or trying for rook e3, rook f3 as soon as possible, perhaps start with knight h6. Uh, because, I mean, we got here and then the knight actually had to leave f6 because uh, it's not really doing very much there. It looks very nice, but it doesn't really achieve a lot. But yeah, it's uh, uh, it's not for the weak-hearted, uh, the, the, this type of game. Yeah, you really do have to be premium to play, uh, to play Bunter Blitz games. And there was also a request for the scotch on Twitter, so we'll play the scotch. Um, I played, when I was uh, much younger and I was playing uh, the scotch semi-seriously, I was playing 92 here. Uh, Morozevich recently played uh, a very weird move, h2, h4 in this position and actually won in 25 moves against a very strong opponent. I can't quite remember who uh, in the in the Doha tournaments, but to play h4 you kind of need to understand what the idea is and I don't, so I'll stick to what I sort of remember. This is not a very good move though, because it's just not fast enough. It makes a lot of sense positionally because you want to put this uh, this piece on f3 uh, supporting the, uh, the the pawn on e5, which black in a lot of cases plays against in in these structures, and you know if you if you consider it in those terms, it's a very sensible idea, but it's a bit slow. Actually, I'm not sure about this knight e4 move, e4 move at all. Yeah, I think I think that was against Vichy, but. I think Vichy just didn't play that game particularly well. He does occasionally have, uh, you know, off, off games, so to speak. Yeah, Queen e6 is very strong here. I kind of failed to consider it. I think because of that knight c4 was probably a lot better than what I played. Because I'm sort of wondering what I'm doing here right now, to be honest. Um, 
very very uncertain about my next decisions I can play c4 but once again it just looks incredibly slow I can play knight g5 maybe but it really doesn't belong there but I think of the options available to me I like this the best if he goes knight b4 I can still play a3 and if he plays d5 it becomes a bit of a mess but I think it's playable for white and if he goes knight b6 I can play b3 and at least uh, you know, structurally, I'm not doing that horribly, and I am two moves away from making sense uh, of my position by playing bishop b2 in long castles. Hmm. <laughs> Knight f6 is a really, really weird decision. That's, I think, not something you should be doing in almost any any situation. And yeah, I'll go with the uh, with the most obvious plan of just castling long here because I mean it looks like my uh, queen side position is somewhat exposed, but actually with the bishop coming to d4, uh, it's not. And uh, what my opponent succeeded in doing by playing knight f6 and gf6 is just uh, completely destroying his queen side, king side structure and making you know most most end games are now close to hopeless for black and also in the middle game you might get mated it was a really strange decision i don't really i mean there was also what was even stranger about it is that there was absolutely no call for it nothing in his situation <clears throat> i'm sorry required him to do that. I think I can take. I mean, obviously I can take, but I think I can sort of keep the material. If he plays a6, I take, he goes rook a8, I go rook, bishop b5, rook takes a2, and just king c2. And if he does that, yes, d5 is a bit of an annoying threat, but I think I'm safe enough here. Although maybe it was better not to allow any of this. <clears throat> but uh, it is a reasonably healthy pawn, and it was very difficult to uh, reject the idea of uh, taking it. Yeah, a6 is a good move here. Now with the pawn on b3... <clears throat> Taking on a6 is a lot less attractive because rook takes a2. <clears throat> I'm sorry, it would have been a lot bigger, uh, an, uh, a lot bigger issue. But I should, I'm <clears throat> sorry, something is happening to my voice. I should still be better here. Uh, like in a position like this, I should be, I should still be better. Although this allows, this allows rook d8. I'm, I'm, I'm a bit unhappy about well, more than a bit unhappy about how I'm treating this. If I'm allowed to play king c3 and bishop c2, I have a very large advantage, but he probably should not allow that. I mean, should should be able not to allow that, is what I'm trying to say. But here my king actually lands on, lands on c3. And I think, I mean... This bishop ending will be completely hopeless for black uh, unless something really drastic happens, which I don't think it will. I'll take with the f-pawn. It shouldn't really matter, but in terms of uh, him having options to create a passed pawn somewhere, I would much rather he created uh, a passed pawn uh, on the f-file uh, rather than the h-file because it's a lot easier to control. I'll go a4, a5, and then I'll go after his pawns because that way we will uh, uh, we will be able to uh, win a lot easier. Actually, if he goes h4 here, I'm kind of wondering if maybe I cannot take, which would be which would be regrettable. I think I might not <clears throat> be able to take. I thought I will I, I will just be able to take here for, with no with no issues. But it it does seem to be takes f4 h5 f3 king d2. 
It's a very, very committal thing. I mean, I can, I can continue ignoring this, but it gets a bit tricky. Kind of want to take. I can even play h6 now, forcing his king away. And then we play king d2. Because that way his bishop will not be able... Uh, the move I was worried about if I played king d2 here straight away was uh, bishop e4. And this we do not allow by playing h6 here. If he, if he has a waste of tempo on king f6, then we should definitely be able to control his pawns. And we have too many passers here. And this should be winning, I think, because of queen d8 check. Although, once again, maybe I overestimated just how comfortable this victory is. Maybe it's just not that comfortable. I somehow assumed I will be. Uh, it will be very, very easy to control, control the possible checks he can give here. Don't really want to play King B2. I mean, I can if I need to, but don't really want to. I think I'll check once again, maybe he makes a mistake here. Here, this is what I was kind of hoping for, because I think if I play king d4, my life becomes a lot easier for the future. If I activate this, uh, if, I, uh, if I actually play with the active king instead of a passive king somewhere on b2. Because he really doesn't have a lot of uh, counterplay here. Or at least he shouldn't have, if I play correctly. Like maybe even just continue continue pushing forward. Yeah, we won on time, but I think the final position actually is completely winning for us. Uh, but I think my, my plan here was a bit too slow. After f4, king c3, bishop d5, maybe the simplest way to win is just to play something like bishop d1, bishop takes g2, bishop e2, and make sure that no passed pawns I ever created on the king's side, and then just start pushing on the queen's side. I may have taken it a bit too, you know, in a, in a too relaxed fashion somewhere around here. But uh, really, there was absolutely no call for black to play knight f6 at so. It's a very, very strange decision. And yeah, I, I wasn't really paying attention to chat during the game, but... Uh, it seems like there isn't a, a lot there that requires immediate attention. Why not take on a6? I guess it was uh, uh, like in, in position somewhere, somewhere around here, I, I could take on a6 with a check. Yeah, that I really should have done. Yeah, of course, Aram is correct. Yeah, for some reason, uh, in my mind, I was calculating like queen b6 check, he goes king e7. And taking on a6 without check is so uh, sort of uh, out of the question because black will get too much counterplay. But I actually missed an opportunity to take on a6 with check, which should not be. Although, even here, he goes king e5, and I suddenly have no checks. And if I have to start allowing checks, the king on, on c3 might be in trouble, so uh, it, it made sense what I did. Like I, I secure my king position, and here I have a choice uh, between putting it safe on b2 or uh, driving it to forward towards d4 and c5, which I think was a very good practical decision. I think I haven't played d4 yet. Uh, during this session. And uh, yeah, okay. Uh, that, that's a mistake which I uh, caught in time. I looked at the rating and I thought, yeah, this is someone very strong, but uh, he, I mean, wait, can't play non-premiums. 
Can't play on premiums, my mistake. Caught myself in time there. The the 26, 27 uh, confused me. Yeah, I could have played bishop d1 there now or never, but then he goes takes, takes, king e4, bishop e2, king e3, bishop takes e4, and then bishop b7. And I was worried that he will be in time to... Uh, it's very difficult to discuss the position without the, the game on the board, so I think maybe we should abandon it. But I did consider it. It was very much... Uh, a, 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 a very, it was a very serious option that I needed to evaluate properly, and you are correct mentioning it, but I eventually decided that pushing the h-pawn up the board was uh, more precise. I may have been wrong. And frankly, the way the game went, I, I don't think my decision uh, looked wrong. It looked, uh, it looked like I should be winning after just playing gh, h5, h6, h7. Doesn't seem to be starting this one, so we'll give it another five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, I think there is a, a weight of opinion in, in chat that I should be playing. Uh, more games against lower rated people so I'll pick I'll pick someone below uh, below 2000 for the next one if I I mean there's obviously plenty of them but I also wanted to find something which is uh, not a five minute challenge but that's difficult that uh, appears to be almost impossible. <laughs> uh, yeah, I apologize if I haven't been using the word objectively as much as I normally do. Um, what shall we play? Let's play the Peards. This is a tricky little line. I don't have that much experience with it, but I uh, I know that you know not a lot of people do this, but it's a it's a very sensible little line which uh, I don't think gets the credit it deserves. That's not entirely fair now and ever. I do try to play uh uh, play the stronger players as much as possible because I feel that uh, uh, that way uh, and the, the this is of course uh, mainly you know infotainment with the with the emphasis on the entertainment but uh, um, educational value of these shows whatever I mean however you know it's it's arguable how much of it there is but I think it 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 improves if I play if I play against stronger opposition and face sterner tests. Then, uh, you know, compared to the games where I can just coast and uh, and uh, uh, just exploit my opponent's mistakes without really being uh, being tested properly. But I do play. I mean, it's definitely not not only twenty four hundred and above.
Not sure about knight h4 because I was actually considering play bishop g4 anyway, and now I will do it with an extra tempo, so to speak. Not that uh, white's position necessarily becomes horrible after it, but I don't think you should be uh, so relaxed about uh, giving your opponent exactly what he wants. I wanted to play bishop b6, but then I realized that after bishop h6, white's setup uh, starts making a lot of sense, which is uh, not ideal. And I would like to have uh, e7, e5 as a reply to bishop h6, but that means I need to put my bishop on a, on a weird square, maybe even all the way back to c8. And white can also just play knight f3 here. He can also play bishop takes d5, but that probably doesn't quite work out tactically. I think knight f3 is probably the uh, the most logical move here. Or knight d2. Knight d2 is also a, a normal move. But I think you would generally like as white to uh, start uh, getting your pieces back into normal harmonious locations. And uh, after knight d2, uh, an additional option... Yeah, knight f3. I like knight f3. The additional option I would have had after knight d2 would be knight takes g5, queen takes g5, and then e7, e5, using the fact that the queen, uh, I mean, the knight on h4 is hanging and the queen on g5 is currently hanging. And here I sort of originally thought f7, f6 wins a piece, but it kind of doesn't because he can take on e4 using the fact that the pawn on g5 is suddenly uh, pinned. Yeah, white has a very decent position still. I think he should take with the queen. If he takes with the knight, I, I think I get the option to play e7, e5, which is something I would very much like to do. Because I think, uh, you know, the current structure is, uh, is very solid and fine for black, but um, I would much rather my bishop on g7 was a lot more active. And... Uh, in view of that, both knight of three and now taking uh, on g5 with the queen make a lot of sense in order to stop, uh, uh, you know, any possibility for black to uh, open up the center uh, with e6, e5. And I'll start uh, gaining space on the queen side here. This generally is maybe not such a, uh, an easily uh, advisable move in these structures because the, 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 the c5 square becomes very weak. But uh, in a situation where he doesn't really have a dark square bishop, and I do, I think I should be able to control the c5 square uh, well enough. I also probably should have considered playing knight a5, knight c4 straight away, and bishop d7 is a bit of an autopilot move, which it's not a bad move, and it, it is the best square for this piece, but I think maybe it wasn't uh, exactly required uh, at this particular moment. And I don't like this bishop c2 move at all, because I think he should not have given me this opportunity of playing knight c4 and more or less forcing him to take, because he doesn't really want to abandon the b2 pawn. But if he takes, I take with the b pawn, and then he has a very serious structural weakness on b2 I should be able to play against. Uh, 960, I mean, I would very much like to, to play more 960 in my life, but... Um, I'm not sure how well equipped we are uh, at chess 24 for doing that. I would very much like to keep both of my bishops here, and I think I can do that. Because bishop takes e5 followed by rook b8 just wins a pawn here, but it gives up my best bishop. And I think uh, in terms of playing for the most advantage I can have here, bishop e8 is more, is more ambitious and is m more correct. If he plays rook e2, rook b8, bishop d1, I can play bishop f8. And because the b2 pawn is pinned, I think there's really no good defense against bishop takes a3, as far as I can see. And this I can just safely ignore. He plays f5, I just don't react. I take on b2. And uh, his position should start collapsing.
Yeah, I'm very much a Dostoevsky man. I, I, I can... That one I can settle very easily. Although... Uh, and, uh, you know, after the name Six Canadian Cities, I'm very, very worried about ever mentioning Norm again. Norm, Norm definitely disagrees with me on this one. Norm at some, at some point went on a huge Twitter rant on the subject of uh, Tolstoy being the, the best writer that ever was and Dostoevsky being, uh, well, still a writer by Norm standards, which are very, very lofty and Norm really doesn't consider very many people to be uh, writers at all. So uh, he at least counts Dostoevsky among uh, actual writers, but he feels that it is, I think, at least he used to feel that he was very much sort of lower leagues. And uh, for me personally, it works in, in exactly the opposite way. Somebody called Cricket. How do we not play somebody called Cricket? Uh, Norm is Norm MacDonald. The Norm is one of the best things that happened ever. Very nice forward defensive there, but uh, doesn't seem to be playing a shot in this game. Come on. Ah, oh, there we go. Uh, what shall we do against against this uh, very, very popular move? I don't know, I'll play g6 here for no real reason that I can name. I think if he wants, yeah, if he plays the English attack, I think it makes sense to to play g6 as early as possible because it gives us additional option options since we haven't really committed to either d6 or e6, and we um, we can choose later. It also helps if you actually know something about the Grand Prix, and I don't. I was kind of worried about c4, but on the other hand, I mean, we do have the bishop pair, and uh, how bad can this be? The answer is, of course, very, very bad if I if I don't play this well, and uh, I should be very, very worried about uh, still uh, white still playing a five and uh, and giving mate, which is why I think I will start something, uh, or at least you know, attempt starting something which is. Uh, a source of immediate counterplay. Quite seriously dislike the way I treated the sort of the post opening phase of this of this game. Pretty sure I should have been a lot more precise and I am now uh, facing very serious potential issues. I think I have to do this. It might not be particularly good, but I think I absolutely have to do this. Because I need to distract him from just giving mate on the king side, pretty much. Like f5, queen h4, bishop h6. Uh, when white has such a stable center is is an incredibly potent plan you have uh, very few options against and because of that maybe he could have considered playing a5 on the previous move so that i don't have a uh, i don't have this option at all because now suddenly i actually have something to look forward to i'm i'm making progress on the queen side and with the queen side open it will be a lot harder for him to give uh, to give mate on the other side of the board 
could still happen, of course. But yeah, I mean, there are a lot fewer pieces on the board now for, for him to attack with. And I can uh, sort of pester him on uh, on the queen side a lot. Knight g5 is just one check, pretty much. He can play knight g5, I just take this pawn, and if he takes on f6, I take with the pawn, he gives me one check on h7, and that's it. Yeah, I could distract him by, by singing, or, or minging, obviously, but I'll refrain from doing that. Actually, bishop h6 might not be so stupid here. I somehow completely discounted his kingside attack now, which maybe was a bit over-optimistic. But if he starts with bishop h6, maybe I can take, take and play queen f8 if I'm really scared. I don't like this move. I think this just gives me too much credit. I mean, now I feel like I should be winning with almost any move, frankly. It's just a very, very weird decision. Like, even c4 looks extremely attractive. Also, queen a6 is a very strong move, seemingly. That, I think, is just sort of giving up on the whole concept. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. I don't believe this was correct. There are some issues with both of both of my options though. Hmm. That's a cute little move, but it actually doesn't quite work, I think. So I'll 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 take him up on this. We actually tried the uh, the time odds once, Blue Knight, and that was fun. But it it does take uh, some time to set up, and uh, this is why it hasn't really been repeated since. But uh, yeah, it's a it's an interesting idea, I, and uh, I I actually came up with it myself. So I'm quite happy. I'm quite happy about that. The reason uh, my opponent thought this was impossible was that he was planning to take, give me a check on c8, I play bishop f8, and he goes bishop h6. But in that position, I can play queen d1 check, king f2, and knight g4 check, picking up that bishop. So, uh, yeah, the whole concept doesn't seem to work, and therefore I just win a very, very important central pawn here, and my position is totally winning. I should pay attention, because... Uh, he must mean something by doing this, but I think I'm just winning after this move, and I don't really want to uh, check it too carefully. He wants to play queen d7, obviously, but uh, my original idea... No, that shouldn't work. That really shouldn't work. Uh, I really want to play rook takes f3, but... Uh, that is also not, not as winning as I originally thought, which is regrettable. I seem to be, uh, you know, lacking a, lacking a final blow in that line. But I can just take, I guess. Since there's really not, not a lot happening on, on the queen side anyway. I mean, on the king side. He doesn't really have any pieces to attack with. The schedule of Wykenze was away has been available for a while. Should probably start playing faster as well. And yeah, it remains to be seen if he wants to flag me in this position, but I will probably be fast enough. And uh, I think. Simply allowing me the, the counterplay with b5 was was the source of his, his worries initially. Just play a5 here. I, I can open some files, but it will be a lot less effective if the pawn on c4 stays where it is. Okay, let's play maybe the, the last two, because I, I have a specific train I have to aim against if I am to make dinner. And it's very important to make dinner. Uh, and by make dinner, I mean, of course, uh, make it in time for dinner, not not make actual dinner. I'm 
completely incapable of that. Uh, and in order not to miss that train, I should probably limit myself to around two hours. Bishop d4, yeah, why did I, yeah, that was completely ridiculous. And I saw it in some other positions. Yeah, good good spot, uh, Alexander puts here. I, I, for some reason, I only wanted to play bishop d4 check uh, after after the exchange sacrifice on f3. Just tuned out, tuned out there. I actually played the bird in a tournament game, uh, Jogger, so... Uh, it's an opening you can try. I'm not sure it's all that great, but it's definitely something you can try. I played it against uh, Dmitry Yakovenko with white once in a, in a Russian Super Final. So in a very serious tournament I cared a great deal about. Should probably make sure I don't blunder any tactics here. Start with c3. There have been some changes in the Fabio management team, but I'm not entirely sure what they are. I will have one day of commentary with, with Lawrence. I think it will be round three, if I believe, if I remember correctly. So if there will be enough public demand, I might, I might uh, uh, try to get him to talk about it. These types of positions you normally see from Karakan, and they aren't really a lot for white. It looks nice because you have this knight on e5 and your, your pieces look harmonious, but also black has zero, uh, zero weaknesses and uh, very, very solid structure. And the only way you make some kind of progress if, is if you start uh, actual attack on the king side. And uh, uh, that is much easier said than, said than done. And also there is obvious counterplay with c6, c5 available to black if, uh, if he wants. And I'm not entirely sure what I'm doing with my bishop on, on, on c1. Maybe I could try uh, playing bishop h6 or bishop g5, one of those two. The problem is that, you know, bishop g5 is a lot more attractive than bishop h6 because I would very much like to get the dark square bishops off the, off the, off the board. But it's impossible because I will lose a piece after f6. Yeah, and this is a strong move, because if I play bishop h6 now, which is what I was planning to do, he has f6, and the queen on c7 protects the pawn on g7, and I actually lose material. Yeah, these last few moves did not really go according to plan for me. Kind of dislike my position now. If he plays c5 here, my position actually becomes a bit awkward because I, I still haven't managed to develop the c1 bishop anywhere and he starts uh, creating, uh, well, not threats as such, but uh, sort of uh, there is definite pressure against my center here. I'm not sure. I mean, it's very difficult to pick uh, pick names in uh, in that context. Klamar. I I still uh, like listening to Yasser a lot, but that might be. I mean, he's a fantastic commentator, but uh, it might be influenced by. I mean, his just the sound of his voice is is very soothing. I think we are, you know, living in a. In the, in the golden age of chess commentary, to be honest. I think there's a lot of very, very uh, good people working in that field right now. 
I would like to start pushing the h pawn because with the bishop on g6, my one good plan here is to to play something like queen g4, h4, h5. But I also would like to control this knight on d5 so that it doesn't get switched over to f5. Uh, but maybe this this isn't that much of a concern because if knight d7, I have bishop b4, I have bishop g5. Tata Steel Chess uh, website is a bit confusing, but if you're looking for the detailed schedule, it is somewhat surprisingly not found under the schedule tab, which you which is where you would expect it. You go to I think visit us, and then you go to masters, and then there is a a, a tab you can click which is called I believe program. And then suddenly, voila, you have uh, the complete schedule for the tournament. And my opponent should not have resigned here. I actually am not quite sure if this is strong, because after rook d8, uh, he, might be, uh, he might be winning his piece back with dividends, because after bishop b3, he has queen a5. And I had actually seen all this, but like not taking this piece would look even, even more ridiculous, I think. And I decided to check, and he just resigned, which is a very good, uh, you know, it's a very good practical situation for me. But I, you know, in in, in the interests of honesty, I have to point out that I don't see any way for myself to keep the peace after rook d8. Okay, one or two last games, depending on how the last one goes. Somehow today everybody is challenging me to uh, to a five minute game, and as the uh, as the session progresses, uh, it becomes a less and less attractive uh, attractive proposition to play a five minute game. You want something which goes by faster. B3, B6 is not really the way to uh, to reply to B3. I'm pretty sure, but I somehow always end up getting getting uh, you know sucked in into this uh, into this thing. It really isn't uh, good in any way. I don't know why I keep on uh, doing this to myself. Like, this is a fantastic Paulson for white if he just plays d4 here, doesn't want to, you know, uh, in, in, invent a bicycle and just goes d4, cd4, knight takes d4. You get a fantastic version of very normal Paulson positions. I honestly don't know what, what is constantly possessing me to, uh, to bang my head against this particular wall time and time again. I don't want to allow knight a4. The, the reason for b5 is not that I want to create a threat of b5 before, which is not a threat at all because he has knight a4 in reply. I want to make sure that the bishop doesn't get chased away from c5 straight away. And uh, this way I secure, I mean, I think on the previous movie 4 e 5 may have been very strong and my opponent just ignored it for reasons of expediency. But allowing it on the next move would really be very careless from me. Knight g4 may have been very strong there, yeah. That's a that's a very good point, Penguin do. Yeah, knight g4 was crushing because Castle's queen h4 is kind of made. And if he if he doesn't castle, he has no good way to protect the pawn on f2. Yeah, I, I also sort of autopiloted there for a second. It's uh I do feel a bit a bit tired. And uh, yeah, quality definitely suffers. May have missed knight takes b5 here. Well, I mean, I definitely missed it, and I mean, uh, it, it might be very strong. 
Although I could still play something like Queen B6 and just pretend it was all part of the uh, of the grand plan. And also after Rook Fd1, I definitely should have given some consideration playing Knight G4 again. I keep on missing this opportunity in this game. It's kind of weird. Missing it once is uh, sort of understandable, but missing it twice is really... There's no excuse. And actually my opponent should play A4, and if I play B4, he should play A5. So I'm sort of uh, playing with... Uh, well, not fire exactly, but I am allowing a very important a very important option for him and he is not taking the uh, he is not taking the chance so I'll I'll start doing something on the king side not playing g3 is just unthinkable here you absolutely have to play g3 for better or worse worse I mean because uh, yeah with the h file open this is just completely dead there's no way you can hold this position it just collapses there are uh, too many things going wrong with your position here. There should be some kind of forced mate, which it is. Okay, one final game, I guess, because uh, I do feel a bit, do feel a bit jaded, to be honest. And uh, it's in no was no one's interest, I think, to for me to play poorly. The point Nunak is make, making in chat about commentators, uh, you know, whenever possible, not using machines during commentary, I think it's a valid one, and I think we do try, uh, we do try not to use the machines as much as possible. And and the other point that he is making, I mean, he is very very categorical about it, and uh, I have to say, I would like the same thing stated slightly more. Uh, in a somewhat less commanding tone, but I do think that uh, it's a valid point because uh, if you stare at the machine evaluation for for any length of time, it does it does most certainly influence your influence your way of thinking. And I mixed up a move order here. I think you're supposed to start with c6 and uh, only take on d4 later. Uh, and yeah, this is. Uh, This is the main position, but I think we were supposed to get to it via a different move order. I used to play this line uh, a great deal when I was uh, trying to incorporate the King's Indian into my into my repertoire, which was uh, about twenty years ago. But uh, since it was so long ago, my my memory of what goes where is uh, hazy. This doesn't look right because it allows me, and I will not miss this idea for two games in a row. It allows me to do this. And here I have a choice between uh, Queen H4, no, I think Queen H4 check is just stronger. Because I can also go Knight G4, Knight takes H6, but then my Knight is locked out. I think actually just giving up the G6 pawn for uh, very fast development and to keep my knight uh, on e5 it just makes more sense to me I don't think uh, I don't think uh, it was worth a pawn to just uh, misplace your knight so badly so yeah in terms of uh, using or not using machines during commentary I mean uh, I am very much on the record in detail about about this and uh, my views are should be reasonably well known and there are some positions in which I feel uh, 
it's impossible, well, not impossible, but it's wrong not to use the machine because uh, uh, you're just wasting everybody's time in a position where there clearly, is, there clearly is a solution and that solution is readily available to anyone watching the game on, well, any website because he will have, uh, he will have uh, access to what the machine is saying immediately. But in most uh, reasonably quiet positions, I think it's better for for the user's experience if the commentators try to stay away from uh, from the machine evaluation for as much as possible. I would very much like to find mate here because it feels like I should be able to drive the queen away from the good squares here and give mate. I mean, the start is almost always rook e5. But then I am a bit confused. I can play queen f4, but then he takes, I take, and he has rook e2. That's not mate. I can also just play b6, but then the rook on e8 is hanging. Really feels like I should have mate here. I can also just play knight e5, which is, uh, it gives me a crushing advantage, but it kind of feels boring to do that. Probably is the strongest move though. Because I threaten, uh, like rook f1, for instance, just loses to queen g5 here, and uh, the queen on c5 will get picked up uh, by a... Or even this, actually. This allows me this allows me to show the same idea, uh, but then with, with slightly more finesse. G, g2 is hanging, and I will pick up uh, uh, the, the queen by going knight of 3 check next move. I very rarely play the King's Indian these days. It's not an opinion that agrees with me, uh, an opening that agrees with me. My results weren't horrendous, but they weren't good either, and I never really felt in control, and I never really felt like I, like I knew what I was doing. So I just gave up and went back to the Grunfeld. Yeah, and that does seem like a very nice symbolic, uh, symbolic picture on which to to end the show, we uh, we finish on twenty eight hundred even. I think I think that's fair. I think that should conclude the broadcast for today. Uh, there probably will be something on the rest day. I'm not entirely sure what. For those of you who might be interested in that, uh, I probably will be uh, doing the first run of uh, Shady Stream as a co-op. That should start at. 10 o'clock Central European, but uh, there probably will be something chess related later in the day. Uh, nothing has been, nothing has been decided yet, but uh, probably will be something. Anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for, uh, thanks for keeping me company in chat, and uh, uh, see you guys tomorrow for the first round of the uh, Tata Steel Vikanze tournament. Cheers, everyone.